I would like to call uh, Mr. Tom Boothert. You know that um, Israel, the United States, are allies, and uh, during the last years, we have been working very hard to build the strategic relations between Israel and the United States, also in the cyber domain. And uh, I think that we uh, really succeeded to do a lot with the Federal Administration. In last March, uh, in, during my visit to United States, I had the opportunity to meet just the new comer to the White House, Mr. Rob Joyce, who was here on the stage as a cyber coordinator, and uh, Mr. Bo Tom Bussard, which is the um, assistant to the President of the United States for Homeland, for Homeland Security and Counterterrorism, and I may add also for cyber, and there is a privilege to call him to the stage. Please, Tom. error here today by drinking too much uh, double espresso coffee. <clears throat> I will attempt to be uh, appropriately somber and not so overexcited uh, by my stimulants. Um, thank you too from standing here. You can't see the audience, uh, but I know it's full and I know it's full up top and I know that represents a, an insight into the founders of this event and the leadership they've shown. So uh, thank you for that kind introduction, Dr. Matanya. It's an honor to be here today on behalf of uh, President Trump and the American people. And uh, thank you to the Prime Minister who has just arrived. Um, Dr. Matanya, it's a, it's a wonderful conference. I appreciate TAU and the government for inviting me. And I'm humbled to speak to this uh, important event of truly distinguished people. This event strikes me as um, Cyber professionals from, they tell me, more than 50 countries. Those of you that are here for Cyber Week are among the world's most accomplished experts in this field. Thank you for what you do, and thank you for what you will continue to do when you leave here this week and leave our time together and go back to your jobs where uh, we don't wear ties and we, uh, and we challenge and face things that challenge us. Prime Minister Netanyahu, I know uh, as he arrives here that our relations are strong, and judging uh, uh, by this audience and by looking around last night, uh, the Prime Minister can bring more American talent into one room than I can. So that's a testament to his leadership. Uh, I'm here to talk about cybersecurity, but I'm also here because President Trump understands uh, that the United States cannot lessen our engagement in this region of the world, cannot lessen our support for Israel, create a power vacuum for Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas, ISIS to fill, and that doing so would make a more dangerous place. I'm pleased to be here with a Prime Minister who voiced his clear-eyed objection to appeasing Iran and enabling it. He did so at great professional risk, took political an unpopular truth. He was right. He was courageous. President Trump and the Israeli people have a stronger, deeper relationship with the United States of America because of it. Prime Minister Netanyahu will continue to defend the state of Israel. President Trump may visit, demonstrated our continued commitment to Israel, and we remain particularly close on security issues. America's security partnership with Israel is stronger than ever, and the Iron Dome Missile Defense Program continues to keep the Israeli people and Hamas, the David Sling and Arrow Weapons Systems guard against long-range missiles, and we hope someday to live in a world where children never rush towards shelters when sirens ring out. There is incredible technology in the Iron Dome system, and 
fight moves from missiles to malware. President Trump said something else in his recent trip here, by the way, his first international trip. He said that Israel is a testament to the unbreakable spirit of the people. In great country, one message resounds, and that's the people. of partners and aim to stamp out violence, extremism, and unacceptable intolerant behavior. And so cyberspace has emerged as a major arena of conflict between liberal and illiberal forces across the globe, making the interconnected world of cyberspace one of the biggest strategic challenges, challenges since 9-11. Israel, as you know, is a market-based market-oriented, knowledge-based economy with a strong technology sector. You have the highest research and development spending per GDP in the world, and one of the most talented tech workforces in the world, and a system for developing that talent that we can all learn from and be envious of. So it's not surprising that the leadership of Israel would support events such as this to bring together the best and brightest minds to address today's challenges in the cyber environment. While physical borders can be extremely important, as Dr. Matanya knows, cyberspace knows no boundaries. Nations increasingly have the ability to steal sensitive information, alter data, destroy systems, and the trend is heading in the wrong direction. Destructive attacks are being executed by belligerent nations. North Korea attacked Sony and Iran attacked the Sands Casino and Saudi Aramco. Neither of these countries have near the sophistication and resources of China and Russia. And we cannot forget the challenges facing our small and mid-sized businesses, the backbones of our economy, who are facing threats from ransomware to theft of intellectual property from complex advanced intelligence services. Cyber threats continue to grow. The complexity of the challenge continues to elude us. So the question is, what is standing in our adversary's way? Part of the answer, as you know, includes firewalls, antivirus, good network hygiene, etc. Better and faster information sharing is also suppressing malicious activity the resilience Dr. Matanya spoke of. These are all things we are promoting in the United States and improving in the Trump administration. And yet, this would have been the same answer 15 years ago. And, while well, these are good and necessary things, the adversary doesn't encounter them until he's compromised his target's network, at least for the first time. Today, 15 years later, we're introducing terms like artificial intelligence and machine learning. We have ways of sharing information and ways to orchestrate defenses in our networks faster than we could have ever before. Again, all good and all necessary. Better and faster, but not different. And always after the adversary is in his target's network. I'd like this audience, this week, to advance the conversation. The Israelis and others have adopted operational constructs between the public and private sectors that what the adversary is doing in the internet and how to thwart, impede, and otherwise inflict a defensive cost on the adversary, or when necessary, to deter bad behavior with punitive measures. We must recognize that while we have small differences, free and market-based nations must engage with the private sector in an operational way, in an operational way, to identify our cyber adversaries and, and increase our defenses considerably. And we can do it in a way that preserves our privacy and our security and our intelligence sources and our methods. Dr. Matanya made a point and a reference to the Iron Dome. 
I believe we can operationalize our defenses in a way that exists in a higher level of internet topography. And I challenge this group to think through ways to do it. Cybersecurity is about risk management at the end of the day. Network technology will never be completely secure, and we need to prioritize our work. We need to mitigate and manage that risk. This includes identifying key data and the functions that must be protected, and then deliberately planning for their protection. We must centralize policies in government and industry, and decentralize their execution. And we need standards and metrics to hold managers accountable. We must implement fundamental cybersecurity practices to include regular patching, multi-factor authentication, encrypting data at rest and in motion, and whitelisting applications. We must also secure our nations. This includes defending our critical infrastructure and focusing on the energy sector, communications, financial services, and transportation, the lifeline sectors. There is a clear role for government in this work. This priority, while it has been subject to countless discussions, has not seen the progress it deserves. Across the globe, there are countries that can do this with greater success than others, and Israel is one of them. We cannot achieve the security we need without partnerships. Partnerships with industry, partnerships with academia, partnerships with the owners and operators of infrastructure, and partnerships with like-minded countries. Increased defense is critical, as is deterrence. We must get serious about deterrence strategy. The stakes are too high and the risks are too grave not to. This requires a foundational understanding of what constitutes responsible behavior and what is unacceptable. Progress has been made in building consensus around responsible state behavior, and the Trump administration will work to expand that consensus. We must move from taking steps and talking about norms to implementing them. But we must also hold those who violate these norms accountable. This may not be achievable through a UN effort. Just last week, we saw the limits of the UN group of governmental experts, which had achieved some good results in the past, but came up short. They were unable even to agree on their final report. It's time to consider other approaches. We will also work with smaller groups of like-minded partners to call out bad behavior and impose costs on our adversaries, and we will also pursue bilateral agreements if and when needed. Deterrence may require limiting bad actors. The questions we must ask, there should be incentives for cooperation and consequences I think that needs to be stated out loud. While not abandoning our multilateral efforts, the United States will move forward internationally in meaningful bilateral efforts, such as the one we enjoy with Great Britain and now with Israel, while continuing to build a like-minded coalition of partners who can act together. The cyber strategies of the future must draw upon the clear experience of history. The only way to provide a safer and more secure future in a digitally connected world is to embrace the principles of individual property, the rule of law, and an unwavering commitment to free markets, and to exclude those who do not. We share these values with many nations around the world, including Israel. We know nations that are economically and politically free will always be stronger than nations that are not. There has been no better engine for capitalism and growth than the internet. Consider the wealth and development that cyberspace has enabled. The internet reflecting our values is where we will find partners who share those values. Nations that share these values also know the role of government is to apply rules to protect them. 
The free market succeeds because of basic rules observed between individuals and also rules designed by government to protect contracts and promises, transfers of goods and services. When this is threatened within a nation or internationally, it is appropriate for the government to respond. The system works in part because those who violate the rules suffer consequences and those who act well do well. So if individuals or nations choose to manipulate cyberspace for financial gain or geopolitical advantage, we must act to protect our shared values. The internet is a great example of the free market at work. No capitalist is surprised that the internet was invented in a free society. The internet was invented in America by Americans, as I've said, and at times forgotten one Brit, but with government help. Yet it was private industry that turned the internet into one of the world's greatest tools. Despite success, the internet is vulnerable to fragmenting and we need to push back. The next step must be gaining international cooperation to impose consequences on those who act contrary to this growing consensus. Should work to develop options for imposing consequences within a coalition if possible. Until then, the United States must seek partners bilaterally. And so it is with great pleasure today that I can announce today the commencement of a U.S. Israeli Bilateral Cyber Working Group. And with equal pride, for those of you that watched them perform here today, that I can announce that that group will be led by not only Mr. Rob Joyce, who's working tirelessly at the White House. They great. Give them a round of applause. They'll be leading a group along with the Department of State and representatives from the Departments of Commerce, Defense, and Homeland Security, and the FBI from the United States. The U.S. delegation will meet with senior leaders from Israelis, Israel's National Cyber Bureau, Defense Force, Shin Bet, Ministries of Foreign Affairs, Justice, and Defense. The meetings this week will focus on a range of cyber issues, critical infrastructure, advanced R&D, international cooperation, and workforce development, among others. These high-level meetings represent the first step in strengthening bilateral ties on cyber issues following President Trump's visit to Israel. And they make good on the promise he made to Prime Minister Netanyahu at their meeting on February 15th. The bilateral working group of experts from across agencies will work with an eye towards developing a different operational construct, focused on finding and stopping cyber adversaries before they are in your networks, before they reach critical infrastructure, and identifying ways to hold bad actors accountable. A different conversation indeed. We believe that the agility Israel has in developing solutions will result in innovative cyber defenses that we can test here and take back to America. Over the course of this week, the assembled group here today will develop ideas that will advance cybersecurity and produce recommendations from industry on best practices, implementation and execution concepts. Perfect security may not be achievable, but we have within our reach a safer, more secure internet. I look forward to the progress we make together in this endeavor. I thank you very much for having me here today. I thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to the future.